Today we're working on the 32AF43. I want this to be my new Tate monitor. I'm going to turn it clockwise. And before I do that, I want to make sure that the tube is secure in the chassis, the flyback is secure in there, and that I have something on the shell to anchor it to my furniture. Also, this TV has some slight geometry issues I want to see if I can improve, and the white balance is off, and I want to try and improve that. Okay, so we're inside the tube and it's anchored at four points and as uh, close as I can tell this tube is just as secure in the Tate position as it is um, sitting Yoko like this so I don't need to reinforce the tube like I did on my 36 where I put some blocks in here to support it also it's 32 instead of 36 inches so it's not as heavy and just just looking at it and touching it and everything and just I'm not worried about that um, one thing I was concerned about is if the fly like I've seen some flybacks that are very big and aren't very secure and I was worried when I tilted Tate that this flyback could snap in the board here they are soldered in very solid down in here and this one in particular is well supported around here and it's not very heavy to begin with. It feels very secure. I'm not worried about it at all. So I'm not going to modify this tube in the chassis at all in order to set it up Tate. I'm just going to tilt it on its side. However, since it is really big and heavy, I don't want it falling over. So when it's Tate, let's see, it'll be turned clockwise like this the shell will so what I'm gonna do is find some way I'm gonna cut this cut a hole in this right here and run a, sh uh, a tie down on this so that I can run a tie down behind it into a bolt on my solid furniture and that'll keep it from from uh, rocking forward Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear something like crackling and arcing underneath this cap here. So I'm gonna take the anode cap off, discharge it, and we're gonna re-grease it while we're at it. Um, I don't know if we're gonna do it in that order. <laughs> we gotta discharge it before we can pull this off and of course you need to unplug it and have it powered down to do that. But I just noticed this while I was testing the equipment. You boys wanna see an arc? Hey! <laughs> okay, so I discharged it and there was a substantial arc it actually arced twice, but I came back in five minutes and there was no more arc, so I took the anode cap off, which is something I recommend you do. I have a discharge D-series tubes where, where I'll discharge them. I'll come back in five minutes and they'll still arc, and I'll come back five minutes more and they'll arc even a third time. And I'll just keep discharging it until I don't see any spark. I mean, yeah. The, the third time you do it, if you discharge it and there's a spark, there's a little wimpy spark, which probably wouldn't fuck you up, but I mean, I don't know. I ain't messing around. I'll just wait. But uh, this one did spark once, and uh, Sony's never spark on me. I think they auto-discharge, but just something to be aware of. So I got some of my man jelly here and just, just lathered it all over this sucker here and got liberal with it. By man jelly, I mean dialectic grease you get at the auto parts store. They usually have some at the counter. They just call it like a spark plug grease that people put on their spark plugs when they change them. You can also use this gear here on the, your fight stick on the grommet in there. You don't got to get all crazy and import grease from Japan. You can just use this stuff. You hear that? No, you don't because I fixed it. Okay, so accessing the service menu on this is cryptic and it's not what was recommended online, at least not at first glance, which was to hold the volume button down on the TV and press the nine button on the remote. That didn't work. What did work was pressing the mute button on the remote four times 
and on the fourth press holding it and then pressing menu on the TV which will make an S pop up. Then you can release the mute button and press the menu button one more time and you're in the service menu. So let's try that. One, two, three, four, and I fucked up. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. Okay, let's try it again. One, two, three, four. Okay, there's the S. Now let's press menu one more time. And we're in the service menu. Okay, here we are in the service menu and it, uh, it uh, starts out in R cut. So we're gonna head up Okay, so to move around in here, you move around from option to option using the channel button. You can see me doing that here. And then if you want to change any values, you hit the volume button. So right here, R cut 48H, we're going to move it up. You saw me moving it around. Now the weird thing in this menu is it's not just numbers, it's like numbers and letters. So it can be kind of confusing. You know, paper and pencil is your friend here. And I did notice there's no, like if you fuck it up in here, you are fuckled. Like there's no reset. I forget what it is in the Sony's. I think you hit like mute and then enter or something and it'll just reset to whatever it was when you first entered the service menu. This doesn't have that as far as I know. So whatever you change it to, that's permanent. Like I, I made some changes and then I powered it off and I unplugged it plugged it back in, powered it on, went into the service menu, and they were still there. So whatever you change in here, it's permanent. Um, so anyways, moving around, we start out in R cut, G cut, B cut. These are our white balance adjustments. I believe cut is the low end. And then we have G drive and B drive. There is no R drive. So I'm guessing if you wanted to affect the red and turn the red up, what you would do is turn the uh, the green and the blue down in unison and that would boost the red. So yeah, I'm not going to mess with this. I think the white balance on this set is okay. We're not going to do that here today. Maybe if I'm not happy with it in a little while, we'll come back to that. But I did want to correct the geometry here and I already went and did that. Um, a lot of these settings are very similar to what you'll see in a Sony. We have tint, more RGB color stuff. Here we are, H position. Now this is stuff people are used to seeing. 15H, so you can move the screen around. Whoa, fucked it up. Okay, let's get back to where it was, 15H. I'm fine with where this screen is at. V position, linearity, these are all geometry things. So this is the one here that I adjusted, DPC, 12H. It was at, you can see what it's doing? like a pin cushion thing. It was at 10 H, it was right here. And there's there's bowing here, and maybe a little bit on that side. So I set it to 12 H, and it's better. Um, another thing that did help this, uh, my particular issue, was the corner, the CNR adjusts the corner. See, it's O2 H, and you can bring the corners in. Um, but I decided my issue was more along the whole axis. It wasn't just the corners. So I, I left the corners where they were and just made one little adjustment here and improved my, my geometry. And that's about it. I'm not going to try and get wild on this. I just made a little adjustment to and here in this DPC, and that's going to be it for this TV. Well, here it is all set up. Tate. It's looking good. The geometry is corrected. It did have a discoloration issue um, in the corners here once I tilted it tate, and I really struggled to fix that. Here's some footage of me struggling. <laughs> all right while my degauss technique is a little bit amateurish it is effective and the colors are looking good tv's looking good i'm gonna go out there and beat me some out zone <laughs>